this is the helpful lock picker here and a video I have for you today is going over how to make a key for your lock. What I have here is a quick set lock and we're going to go over taking it apart and hand filing a key. As you can see here this is a key that I have made for this lock previously and we will do our best to make our own and this key works very well. In order to get this started we're going to need a few supplies. What you have in front of us are most of the supplies that we're going to need. We can start off with having a sharpie. This can be a valuable tool. Then you're going to need a good set of files in order to file your key. And then you're going to need a key blank to file your key to. You may need a couple of them because this does have a learning curve when you're getting started. Also, if you do not have the key to your lock, you may want a key blank and also a core shim to help get the lock open so we'll be able to make a key. Also you'll be able to pick or rake the lock open if you'd like to take that approach. Then we have some pinning tweezers which are very valuable so you do not drop the key pins, they're very easy to lose. A plug follower which will help us get the plug out so we can get to the key pins. And a pickle fork. A lot of locks come with a sir clip on the back of the lock all locks have some sort of mechanism that secures the back of it. Many locks have a sir clip, some have screws. It's pretty self-explanatory how to get that off and it's beyond the scope of this video to go over each type of lock. Then I have a digital caliper here which will help us decode the key pens so we have an idea of what we are dealing with. And once we get the length of each key pen, we're going to want to have a depth chart telling us how each length corresponds to the key pen. And then we're going to want a pinning tray. If you do not have one of these, what you can do very easily is take a piece of corrugated cardboard and you just peel it back and then you can separate the key pens with each piece of corrugation. And if you want to try to take a faster approach to the filing, you can also try using a power tool like a Dremel. And then we are definitely going to want a vice grip some sort of vice to hold our key into place. All right, so let's get started. All right, so now the first step we're gonna need to do is get our lock open. We have a couple options. One, we can use the key that operates the lock. That's always the easiest approach, but you may not always have the key. So some secondary options are single pin picking the lock open, raking or bumping the lock open, or the easiest technique I find is just doing a shimming approach where you insert a key blank into the back of the lock and use a core shim to shim the lock open and I'm going to show you a quick 30 second overview on that in just a second. Now that we've decided how to get this lock open, the first thing we're going to want to do is get the securing mechanism off the back. This lock happens to use a sir clip, so I'm going to use my pickle fork and just push it right off the back, and I'm going to put it into my pinning tray for safe storage, and we will hold on to this until later on. If you need more information on how to take a lock apart, please consider checking out my video number 81 that goes over how to disassemble and reassemble your first lock. But now what I'm going to do is insert the key and turn about 90 degrees. What I'm going to do is take my plug follower and make sure the flat part aligns with the driver pins here so we'll hold them in place and I will push the plug out. At this point we're no longer concerned about what the driver pins are, we just want to start making a key. So notice when you have the right key inserted that the key pins at the top here sit very flush and they are not too recessed or sticking out too much. This is what we're going to want to have when we make our final key. So in order to start making our key, the first thing I like to do is take the key pens out in order and put them into my pinning tray and then 
measuring and decoding them. So I'm going to do that now. So just try to keep these key pens in order here because that will be very important when it comes to making your key because if this is a lock that you're going to want to actually use in an everyday setting you're going to want to make sure that each key pen is correct. Alright so now I have all the key pens out and they are in the order that they came. So what I can do now is move some of this stuff out of the way here and we are going to look at our quick set depth chart. This chart will tell us exactly how each length corresponds to the depth of the key pen. So I'm going to take out my digital caliper here and the way a key roughly works is the height of the key pen plus the height left on the key all equal the same height and what happens is those will combined lift the key pin up to the very top here where the shear line is. So this is how long each key pin is and that corresponds to a number. So I'm going to now take out my caliper here and we are going to find out each depth. So starting with key pin 1, we are going to see that it is 0.193 which is about a two cut. And we are going to proceed going down the list until we have each key pen measured. So at this point we have decoded every single key pen and now we have a code to our lock. You can see each measurement here but the code to our lock is a 25136. So now you have two options. One you can go to a locksmith and say I want a quick set KW1 key cut 25136 and a few minutes later and a few dollars later they will cut you a perfect key to your lock. Remember, this is essentially the password to your lock. You always want to remember this, especially for your home, just in case you ever get locked out. But now that we have a good understanding of how deep our key pens are going to be, we can start with the cutting process. The next thing I like to do is take a, another quick set key that has already been cut and use this for reference. What I like to do that you may see already is I take a Sharpie and going down each position where the key pens would match up perfectly. I take my marker and I put a line going across. This will give me the proper spacing for when I'm about to file my lock and when I'm about to file my key. And then additionally I like to put a line going down so I can see that spacing further. In order to verify that your spacing is correct what you can do is take your plug here, insert your key, and make sure that all those lines are going down the middle. Having the spacing correct is very important. One thing I'd like you to keep in mind as you're filing is how long each key pen is. As you can see in position one here, this is a short key pen, and in position two, this is a longer key pen. The short key pen means that there's going to need to be more material left on the key to lift that up to the same height as the longer key pen. The longer key pen is going to need more material moved off of the key. So we'll need to keep this in mind as we are starting to file. Now as we're about to start, what I recommend you do is place all your key pens back into the plug in the correct order. This will help us be able to verify how each cut is going. So I'm just going to place these back into place. I'm going to leave this off to the side for a moment. Now that we got this key up in the vise here, we want to get our initial cut started. And you want to just be very precise because these are going to affect the rest of every cut you make following. Now what I like to do is insert my plug and just see if all the key pens are starting to drop down a little bit. 
hopefully the spacing will be correct. And now I'm going to move on to key pin one. And we're going to be going from the bow of the key to the tip, which would be one, two, three, four, five. If this is your first time filing a lock, one thing you should do is consider buying a bunch of extra key blanks because it's easy to mess up as you go, but the whole thing will be a good learning experience. So I'm just going to keep filing down position one until the key pen will sit at the shear line. So this is a two cut, so it has to go down a little bit, but not a whole lot. Okay, that looks pretty much at shear. I'm just going to smooth out the middle piece, then we'll move on to key pen two. One thing I like to do before I begin is take the key pen out of the position that I'm working on, which is two, and I will insert the plug. I just want to look down and make sure the spacing looks right and see if I need to widen it or move it over before we proceed. Now I'm going to replace key pen two, and let's see how far down we need to go. So we still have some more room that we need to work on and we'll see what it takes to file this down. This is a five cut so I need to go down pretty far not all the way to the bottom but still got some good material that we're going to need to remove. I'm starting to get pretty close with key pen two. I just need to get it down a little bit further and smooth it out. Now pen two looks at the shear line. Now we're going to take a look at three. That looks like it may already almost be there as well. Key pin three looks almost like it's at the shear line. It is a one cut, so when we took off the initial material, we did a pretty good job. I'm just going to very lightly file it down just a little bit because it did look just a smidge too tall. And then hopefully we'll be able to move on to the next key pin. So that looks just about right. Now we're going to move on to key pen number four. Key pen number four now appears to be at the shear line, which is a number three cut, and the key is still working pretty smoothly. So let's work on our key pen number five, which is a six cut, which is the maximal cut for a quick set. So I'm going to have to file this one almost all the way down to the bottom here. So I'm going to take a look and see where I'm at. Still have a lot of work to go. Rechecking my alignment, I have to remove some of this material off to the left here. Alright, we're starting to make some progress here. I was a little bit off on my last cut here, so I have to file this little space down here just a little bit. Um, This is why you want to have plenty of keys when you're practicing this, because it takes a while to get used to it. But this is why you want to always check your cuts. You always want to keep a close eye on them as you go. Because once you go too far, you've gone too far. And you'll have to either start over or put a deeper key pin in. But that's not practical if you're cutting this lock for a reason, and you don't want to have to change the bidding. Alright, so I moved this cut over a little bit. Um, ideally, you would still have this little piece of tip here on the key, just to help with the sliding. But here's the original key I made, and here's the one we just made. Um, I think everything should be at shear now, and it should be a functional key. It's not the perfect looking key, but as you're learning this, you'll get better with time. And you can see that everything's sitting pretty flush, and we're going to see now if the key's going to work, and I'll show you how to install it back into the plug to verify it. 
But the most important thing is you want to have the key pens looking flush and have nothing sticking out too high or recessed too low. Now here comes the fun part. Let's see if our key works. It doesn't have to be a pretty key. All it needs to do is be a functional key. What we want to do before we ever insert it back into the lock and put the lock back together is verify the key's going to work. The first thing you're going to want to do is insert your key into the plug, and you want to make sure that it's going to insert nice and smoothly. If you're getting a lot of resistance, that means that the slopes on your key may be incorrect and you may need to smooth them out. Another thing to take into consideration is MAX, which stands for Maximum Adjacent Cut Specification. It is a thing that locks have that says that how far a key pen can be apart. On a quick set, it has a max of four, which means you can only be four depths away. So if you have a six cut, the maximum cut can be a two cut. You cannot go from a six to a one. If you violate max, you can make keys that get stuck in the locks and wear out very easily. But hopefully your key is working as smoothly as this one. The next thing we got to do is insert our key and make sure it's sitting nice and flush at the shear line. You don't want any of the key pins sticking up too high or being recessed too low. Luckily, if they're too high up, you can fix that by shaving off some more on your key where it is affected. But if they are too low, the only way to fix that is to either start over with your key or, if practical, use a longer key pen. But what I'd like to do now is reinstall this plug back into the lock and verify that the key is going to be working. So what I'm going to do is as I'm inserting it into the lock here, you want to make sure that you're not getting any resistance as you push it through. If you are, that often means that one of your cuts is not deep enough and your key pen sticking out too high. Now I'm going to reinstall the stir clip on the back of the lock here. And then I'm going to test out this key, and this is going to be the true test. So let's see. Without further ado, let's see if my key that we made together is going to work. And it opens up the lock just fine, and it's nice and smooth, and it goes in and out of the lock quite easily. So I would call this a success. But as a quick recap of what we did today, we took a key blank, and then we put some highlighted marks on it with our sharpie marker what we wanted to do was help line up where all the spacings were so that we'd be able to make our cuts accurately then after that we inserted the key into the plug and made sure that those markings were in the center because that is where you're going to want to make your initial cuts then we looked at our depth chart here and saw all the key pins that we had and we decoded the key once we had the code, we had an understanding of how far down we were going to need to cut on each marking on the key, so we knew how long of a key pin we were going to need. We did one chamber at a time, frequently checking, making sure that we weren't going down too far and that the slopes were correct so the key was not getting stuck. Once we were able to get everything cut down to the right depth and the key was nice and smooth, we were able to test and make sure the key was working. Personally, for me, when I was making this key, I ran into trouble in 5. My alignment was a little bit too far off, so I ended up shaving off the tip of the key here that you normally see because I started too far back and had to work my way back. And then when I finally had the key made, I had to file down 5 a little bit more in 1. And then since I had some high and low bidding here, I had to really make sure that the slopes were nice and angled so the key would go in nice and smoothly as you see it does here. So this is something that can take practice. It's definitely something you're going to want to have some extra key blanks on hand as you're starting out. It is a tough skill to learn, but once you learn it, it is pretty good. It is something I'm continually working on myself. I have made some keys, but I would not call myself an expert. I do, however, hope that this video is helpful to anyone out there that has been watching. If you guys have any suggestions on a better way to do this, I'm always open to hearing it. I like to improve my practice as I go on. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much.